Welcome, and thank you for your interest in or your purchase of a Thor digital controller, powered by Zeus and made by Energy Resource Products. In this introductory video, we'll give you a quick overview and guide to get you started the moment you take your Thor digital controller out of the box. In this video, we'll be unboxing the L800 model. Right on top, you'll see the Let's Get Started sheet with QR codes you can scan to access our online resources like the video you're watching. Other helpful QR codes will take you to the wiring videos, programming videos, and knowledge-based articles. All of these resources are available online 24-7 and can be watched right on your smart device. If you're using your home computer or laptop, simply go to our website, energyresourceproducts.com. Once there, simply go to the lower left side of the screen and click on the light bulb, shown here, and you'll be taken right to our support desk. You can also visit controllergateway.com. It's right on the front of our controller next to the ERP logo. Next, you'll see the full color instruction manual for your Thor controller. This will show everything from wiring diagrams to part numbers should you need them in the future. Everything in the instruction manual can be found on our website. Let's talk about the Thor Digital Controller. Thor is a controller with a computer inside loaded with our proprietary software. Thor is integrated to Zeus, our cloud software platform. Thor communicates to the Zeus cloud the moment you turn on the Thor controller. No programming is required. If you do not have a user account for Zeus, please contact your company administrator or the ERP support desk. They will help you get one set up. Thor is intended to be a connected device and has an active cellular modem built right in. The days of bulky gateways are a thing of the past. The first step before you do anything else is to confirm communications are working. Cellular is the most common method of communications. To validate cellular communications, plug the controller in at the location where you'll be installing it and turn on the power switch, shown here. Wait two full minutes and then look at the LED screen. The screen should look like this if you have a good cellular connection. You're looking for the antenna symbol. If you're replacing an existing controller, please be sure to complete this communication test prior to taking the existing controller out of service. If you're intending to use a LAN or Ethernet connection for communications, please be sure to allow enough lead time when coordinating with local IT personnel. Once communications are established and you're ready to begin programming your controller, the first step is to log into Zeus and claim your Thor controller. Claiming is simply another term for registering your controller. The claiming or registration process pairs the specific Thor controller to your account. Visit the knowledge base search using the word claim and you'll find complete instructions on this process. In order for the controller to be claimed, the power switch must be turned on, the antennas must be pointed up, and your LED screen on your Thor indicates it's communicating either by cellular or Ethernet. Claiming and programming can also be completed using the Zeus mobile application. You can download the Zeus app for either Android or Apple phone from their respective online stores. There is no charge to download or use the mobile app. When claiming your controller, you will need the serial number and check code. These both can be found on the inside of the controller door. Now that we've claimed the controller, let's take a quick look at the outside of the unit. We have the power switch, the antenna. Make sure they are always pointed up. Two antennas are required for best operation. We have the relay cords. These are numbered to the corresponding relay channels and light up when energized, providing visual confirmation of power a Modbus cable for Pixis probes, power, and data. When connecting Pixis probes, you will not even need to open up the unit. Make sure you watch the video for connecting Modbus probes before connecting any Pixis probes. There is a process to attaching and configuring. An instructional video is available. Please view this before connecting any Modbus probes. The LED screen. A legend of the symbols and what they mean is located on the inside of the door. Here it is. The waterproof glands. To wire a device to the inside of the unit, simply loosen the cap on the gland, 
remove the plug, and retighten the cap once you're finished. Make sure you leave the rubber plugs in on the glands you're not using to provide protection to the inside. Now let's take a look at the inside of the device. Starting with the inside of the door, you'll see your QR codes. These provide the links to the support libraries for easy access 24-7. Your serial number and check codes. Your LED legend for your LED front screen. And the basic wiring diagram for the Thor powered relays. As we go to the main compartment, you will see the power supplies, relays, 110 volt inputs, and the circuit boards are all protected by a shield for your safety. Please do not operate the device without this shield in place. We recommend that power be turned off and disconnected when the door is open. On the front of the shield, you will see the diagram of the input block, power blocks, the fuse requirements, and the location of the Ethernet, USB, and RS-232 inputs. Right below the shield, you will see the input terminals in gray and blue. The gray inputs are for dry contacts, flow switches, flow meters, paddle wheels, etc. The blue inputs are for analog inputs, 4 to 20 loop power, and analog sensors. Right to the side of the input block are the two power blocks that provide 24 volt DC power to the probes and sensors. Note that the black block is the common or negative, and the red is the positive block. Although it is not usually needed, you can put more than one conductor in each opening. After disconnecting our power, we have removed the protective cover and you'll see the LAN input, the USB inputs, and the RS-232 port. On the upper right hand corner you will see the low voltage power supplies. The larger supply powers the sensor loop and the smaller one powers the Thor computer. On the lower right hand side of the unit are the fuse holders. Two extra fuses are supplied with your welcome package as well as several jumper wires you might need to wire certain devices. On the lower right is the DIN rail mounted mechanical relays. Most Thor devices ship with the power pigtails as shown here. The pigtails can be removed and your external devices like pumps and valves can be hardwired to the relays. The relays support powered valves where power is required to both open and close the valve. Finally, at the lower right hand side of the unit, you have your 110 volt power blocks, positive and negative, which power the Omron relays. There you have the Thor controller at a glance. Please visit the website to access the videos and support materials available 24-7. These tutorials and videos provide in-depth details for specific actions and installations. The minutes you spend watching these videos will save you hours in the field. Thank you for purchasing the Thor Digital Controller made by Energy Resource Products. Remember your data anywhere, anytime, all the time.